a IV Plus event that was in the city. And this is a really good group, IV Plus, and Lisa and I met, and this is pre-entrepreneurship. Yes. And Long Lisa time was ago. exploring. Yeah, was <laughs> where, where I love the steps between pre-entrepreneur. Who's a pre-entrepreneur? What do you define as pre-entrepreneur? Right before entrepreneur. Somebody wants to start a company but it hasn't quite jumped off the high dive. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> does, that, does that work? I know. I'm like that. Yeah, me too, actually. Yeah, yeah. My current thing. Actually, is go back to going good again. We're getting text. So Lisa uh, has this cool point of sale business. It's called Rebel Systems, and she's going to talk about the steps. Aren't you guys married already? Sorry. Are you guys married already? You guys can like you know whisper. You know what? There's seats up in the front row. <laughs> so Lisa's got a, a cool concept, uh, point of sale, and I wanted to specifically focus on how it, a person goes from. And Robert Scoble, who's in the audience, is going to be doing your. Uh, uh, backup Q and A and Q and A for you guys too, but specifically, I want to ask, and uh, Vivek also wants to know. You? Uh, well, yes, I do. Yeah, you totally. He does. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, how do we go specifically from pre-entrepreneur to entrepreneur, or specifically from uh, athlete, non-technical, to uh, being at a technical company, and awesome stuff. So I will wrangle these things for you. I will set your water right here. Everyone, this is Lisa Felsel. So I'll just start with giving you guys a little bit of background on what I'm doing now, and then feel free to interrupt me if you have any questions or comments, concerns, or whatever it is. Um, so I'm the CEO and co-founder of a company called Rebel Systems. We are an iPad point of sale system company. So what we've done, and what our product is, is an iPad. It's connected to a card swipe or a receipt printer and a cash drawer. And then all the other peripherals that a restaurant owner or a retail owner would need in order to run their business, such as a scale, barcode scanner, barcode label printer, whatever it may be, a flatbed scanner for, for grocery stores. So we're resellers of the hardware, and then we all, we create the software. And so the software is is run, it's the central nervous system of the restaurant or the retail store. So it runs your employee time tracking, payroll reporting, inventory control, all the analytics. Um, so we I started the company with my co-founder Christopher Chabera in late 2010, and we got into it because we were trying to integrate into legacy point of sales. We were doing an, we were doing an iPhone app and realized the problems with integrating into the legacy point of sales. It had a very, very close API, um, and it was just a very big, big, big pain point for the restaurant owners and the retail owners. Um, very archaic technology, still used back office servers, nothing was hosted into the cloud. Um, so we just, that was about six months after the iPad came out, and we put two and two together and said, hey, let's create the next generation point of sale system on the iPad, and so that's exactly what we've, cre what we've created. Um, we raised $3.7 million in 2011. Um, we're in companies like Goodwill is one of our clients, Popeye's Chicken, Little Caesars, um, just signed up Tutti Frutti, uh, Pizza Patron, 110 store chain in Texas. Um, so we really focus on not the micro merchants, so um, so not, not like the street carts or the one terminal, we, we focus on the large enterprises. Um, so that, that's kind of what we do. And I, so just to give you a little background about, about me, um, I met Larry, I think when I was a senior, senior at Stanford. Um, I was an athlete, I was a swimmer at Stanford. And I was not really at all into entrepreneurship. I wasn't really into computer science even. Um, I, I was, I was an athlete, and that's what I did, I was a swimmer, um, and that's what my passion was back then. This is about seven years ago. So, I loved, my, pa my passion in life was, was to race. Um, I love, I don't know, how many of you guys are athletes, or have ever competed? <laughs> there he is, yes, <laughs> Robert is, yes. Um, so, 
I love actually my passion in life. I didn't. I wasn't really that. I wasn't. I went to Stanford, but I wasn't even really that into school, to be honest. Uh, my passion in life was was to race and was swimming. And I love swimming because it was standing up on that on those on the blocks and you train. And swimming, you train more than any other sport. You you're up at you're up at 5:30 in the morning. You're working out about five hours a day. You it's 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 a lot it's it's a lot of grind, um, and you and you work really hard. You have coaches constantly yelling at you, um, and it's very up and down. It's very stressful. Um, on the Stanford swim team, there is about a quarter of the team were Olympians. Um, I was recruited by the six-time Olympic coach Richard Quick. Um, that's why I decided to go to Stanford was because was because of him and to, to train under him, um, and. So that, that was my passion, and what I loved about swimming and how I see it very translate into entrepreneurship and what, what I'm doing now is, is, because you, is, is because you're standing up on that blocks and you're not sure what's going to happen. You've trained for over a year for the big race. You have, I, I, I love it because you have, it's, it's very, very competitive. You have the best in the world. Next, in the lane next to you, and you have no, you, you stand out there, and you have to deal with uncertainty, and you have to deal with a very high pressure situation, um, and you have to deal with putting yourself out there, and in 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 though that feeling um, and that and that passion is what I had in swimming, and so when I stopped swimming, I I honestly didn't know I was I was pretty I was pretty lost. I didn't know what I was, I didn't know what I was going to do, I didn't really have, didn't really have a passion, because swimming was, had been my passion ever since I was little, um, ever since high school, all throughout college, so when I, so when I, when I stopped swimming, I knew that I could find a passion, you know, with work somehow, but it just took me a while, while to find that, so after I graduated from, from Stanford, I went to go work in, in for someone else in, in PR, and I thought, oh, PR would be cool. You're talking to people. You're dealing with 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 a lot of people. But it was very. I'm not. I, I, I learned about myself. It wasn't. You know, it was very very bureaucrat bureaucratic for me, um, and I didn't didn't really like looking working for other people. I didn't like work wearing a three piece three piece suit, um, and so I said, okay, well. If I'm wearing the three-piece suit, I might as well go work in finance. So then I, I went to go work in finance um, in London, um, and that was that was interesting. I actually worked in venture capital, and so I saw saw a bunch of the entrepreneurs, um, and it still kind of didn't really sink in what I just still had to just try a lot, a lot of different jobs and a lot of different um, a lot of different paths. I also sold whale tail tortilla chips. Um, for a professor actually at Stanford, um, and you know them? The yeah, they're doing really well now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're doing really well. So I, so I sold these whale tail. I really like to sell. Actually, I learned, I learned from that. But I lo love to, lo love to sell. And then it wasn't until I actually hurt my back um, three years ago that I actually couldn't work. So I couldn't work for someone else. Um, which was a blessing in disguise. I was going to do back surgery, um, and then, and so then I ended up having to go home to Santa Barbara and just to start trying. Realized that, decided just to take 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 the stance and kind of jump jump take a jump and say, I, you know, what I really wanted to do was was start my own business, and that was what I was really passionate about. And I and I didn't ever start so starting, you know. I think starting your own business, you go through different stages, and for me at that point in my at point in my stage, I was just trying to think of an idea, just trying to think of an idea of what what I wanted what I wanted to 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 start, um, and I went through lots of different ideas. I don't know if you guys are, can relate, but I mean, I started I was going to do a swimsuit distribution business. Um, I was going to I started a toy company at one point. Um, but realized that the toy was actually better for um, for puppies, and uh, and so the, so that didn't so that uh, so that didn't work out. But I mean, but what I really found was was being an entrepreneur very similar to 
to, to being a swimmer, it was, it was finding my passion again. So it was finding my passion and very similar to swimming is when you when you get up on the blocks you don't know you don't know what's going to happen and you have to deal with that uncertainty and every single day being an entrepreneur and also going through the different stages in being an entrepreneur um, finding the idea and then gra and then later finding the idea going forward getting VC VC funding and then also we're profitable now so dealing dealing with the the growing, the growth, and the different stages of what you have to do. Go ahead. Uh, did any of those pre-businesses, those baby businesses, did any of those businesses help you with your current business? Definitely. Can definitely. you talk about maybe how you did those baby businesses for the lemonade stand businesses? Yeah, so um, I spent about a year doing baby businesses. <laughs> um, and I, it, I mean, definitely. I think I think that what what taught me was the fact that you just kind of have to try. I think a lot of entrepreneurs they just don't they don't try. And what do you mean by that? I've heard that a lot. What do you mean by that? Um, because, because everybody sort of tries, but what do you mean by that? Well, like actually do it. So I mean, um, well, I when in the swimsuit distribution, I was going to distribute these um these Brazilian swimsuits to. No, into California, and so I actually went out there, did a marketing, did a, a PowerPoint presentation, and actually went in and cold sell, sold to random store owners. Who's cold um, sold in here? Who's cold sold? Okay, go on. So, so we went in randomly cold sold to these store owners um, these Brazilian bathing suits, and so it was that experience of getting yourself out there, being on the blocks, not knowing what's going to happen. Um, and, and those those different experiences put put yourself out there, and you have to. For me, I kept trying, trying, and trying, and trying to, to find an idea that that was st stick. And then once I found Rebel, I f fell in love with it. I thought it was the best idea ever. Um, what do you, you call self a Rebel? And can you talk about how your baby business and trans translated into your success for your baby business? Uh, for cold selling at Rebel. Uh -huh. Um, I think I think um, well we don't we don't we as a business we don't cold sell so you wait for people to call you yeah basically how did you work that because I've heard people say that how do you how do you work it how do you maneuver yourself to be established so well so we maneuvered ourselves because we we're like I said how we started started Rebel is we were doing an ordering app trying to integrate into point of sale now doing the order ordering app we had to constantly. Cold, cold sell and go knock on doors and then we listened to the demand of what the market wanted and what the market really wanted was point of sale and so we're really good with SEO so we have all, all the inbounds calling us and no one else in the market can can do the enterprise level functionality that we can. So you guys can ask questions too. I would ask because uh, I am paying for the room. What, uh, who, ment <laughs> <laughs> who mentored you about SEO stuff? I mean, I, I just don't know about all these complicated terms. Where do I get mentored for the stuff that you're talking about? Who mentored you about SEO? So, <laughs> um, <coughs> so my co-founder is actually really good at SEO. Uh, we we don't really read much in books. We kind of read the book and then see that that's what the book's teaching and do something else. So, <laughs> <laughs> if I told you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about the background of your co-founder and how that came together? Sure. So my my co-founder's uh, background is in cybersecurity, and he's the technical side. I'm on the business side, and we met because I wrote a blog. It was when I was doing my baby businesses, like Larry calls them, um, and I did a blog on entrepreneurs, and it was inspirational quotes for entrepreneurs. And he actually found my blog, commented on it, and I was actually doing a baby bis business at a time called Bull Sifters. Um, uh, what's the URL for that? Bull? It's Bull Sifters. I actually didn't pay the bill, so it's not on there anymore. But, uh, <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> but the idea, it's kind of a funny idea. Yeah, because, what is it? Because I don't, I'm, I don't really like bureaucracy, and that's probably why I'm an entrepreneur. Um, and uh, it was basically to sift out the bull of people's like corporate lingo. So words kind of like leverage and... 
Synergy. Synergy, those kind of words. I don't even remember them anymore because I don't work in a big corporation anymore. But, but that was the idea. So I was I was figuring out how to SEO that site, and then we, we ended up working together. San Diego boys got a question. <laughs> um, who was your first enter enterprise app um, for? Like, what company was your first big company, and how was that um, that whole process? Like, yeah. Going in, pitching to them. Yeah. Like? And who else blogs in this room? Because Lisa brought up a huge point, which is blogging completely helps. It doesn't matter if you're doing like five blog posts a year, a minimum viable blog post, just a little bit of a blog. I mean, Lisa summed together, she copy pasted business quotes from yeah. a blog, bam, a technical co founder. Yeah. That's pretty much how it happened. I was really lucky. Um, what was your question? Your blog. Oh, okay, how did so I get my first client? First customer. Yeah, your first enterprise client. Okay, so at Revel, we always sell everything before we create it, for better or for worse. Oh my god, I love you. I love you with this stuff. Really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hamster wheel the back end. That's what they teach in Engineering so, 45. Really? Hamster wheel the back end. You should teach Engineering 45. I'm not teaching anymore. I just have to go. Um, so we always sell it before we create it. So um, actually, when we decided to do the point of sale, was actually, so have you ever been to Sausalito? Yeah. yeah. So it was Michael Lappert's, you know, uh, Lappert's ice cream. Ice cream, yeah. So he has a bunch of ice cream shops, and we were actually in a meeting with Michael Lappert, and we were trying to sell him the iPhone app. Yeah. And he said, cool idea, kids, but what I really need is a point of sale system. And I said, and I, I basically said, Chris can build that for you. This is your first enterprise client? This is, well, he's kind of an enterprise client. He has like, Three or four. That like counts. Twelve, twelve locations. I guess. Yeah, I mean, that counts. It's a franchise. They're in Hawaii too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, so basically, in the meeting, I made the decision. I said, "There's a demand. We've been hearing it from a lot of our restaurant people that we're trying to sell to, and this guy wants it. This guy wants to pay for it." Um, and I told them in the meeting, I said, "We'll we'll build it for you, <laughs> and we'll give it to you in two months." <laughs> How did you do the contract? Did you do it as a one-way letter of intent, or did you do it as a we do stuff for you and then you pay us later? No, we. He signed. I'm pretty sure he signed the contract before we uh, we went and created it. But it was full price. We never give anything for like for free. So we, he paid full price. Okay, so after him, how did you? Who was your next big client after? How did you? Uh, no. And, and how did you know what to price it at? Yeah, if yeah. If this yeah. was your first sale. Right. And what yeah, I just kind of waited, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what pain points did you solve for that guy with the twelve? Pain points a lot. I mean, if, if you know anything about the point of sale industry, it's like he was complaining in the meeting. He said, "These people, these legacy point of sales, they take three weeks to get back to you. The customer support sucks. There are ten thousand dollars a terminal." We said, "Hey, look at this iPad. You know, we can we can build this for you." And he loves it because he doesn't have to. He was on Cassia registers before, so he didn't have any yeah. business intelligence or anything like that. And he never has to go into the shop anymore. So okay. he can view how everything is doing from one website right. in real time. So. Okay, so how did you price it? How did you know what the price is? Uh, well, we just priced it a lot, considerably less than the legacy systems. And we were software as a service. Yeah. So um, there was a little bit of education, um, and there still is. Um, between restaurant owners getting used to paying a monthly software as a service fee, so we just did a hybrid. So we did let's let's have them pay a little bit up front, and let's have them pay a little bit month month to month. And guys, this is our head of sales. She came to support Revel. Hi, so this is Gabriella. Nice to meet you guys. She runs our sales team. She's also an athlete at Stanford. Nice, Gabriella. Nice, nice to meet you. To meet you. Robert, do you want to go up and then uh, you've had a couple questions. Why don't you? Why don't I? Why don't we bring? I'll bring up Robert's goal. Robert, come on up. Come on up. Thank you for coming up. Stay, 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 stay. Where's your seat? Where's your seat? Where's your seat? Maybe we'll squeeze them together a little bit here. Um, Robert's goal uh, interviews top startups, and I'm blessed to have you here. Um, we go to South by. We mix it up. We do fun things. Um, South by's got some cool things that are going on, right? So, and uh, Robert's. We got uh, kicked out with one of the ideas we came up with last year, right? We, we're we're making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and we got kicked out of the lobby. lobby. Yes. 